All right, another video from Norwich 93 CMP. This is going to be by request of one of the viewers before. It's about the M1 Grand cleaning kits and how to stow them. I also am going to add in uh, the types and uh, what the the parts actually do. Um, if you notice, there's a stock, just the butt stock portion that was donated by Morty. Um, it was a damaged stock prior to. So no good grand stocks were hurt in this making this video. So first thing I want to just uh, talk about right now is <clears throat> what had happened was the original M1 Grand did not have um, any trap doors originally in the back. It was a solid butt plate and the soldiers had to, to use this nickel um, cleaning kit. It was issued with the 1903 Springfields and had to be carried somewhere on their pack and in their kit someplace. Um, what's in here is on this side, which is the rounded side, is an oiler. And the other side would have a thong. And it's a pull through. So it, you unscrew it, one slotted, and then just the weight, you drop it on the barrel, just like a, a snake nowadays. That's also on the inside. The earlier ones were brass like this, and the later ones were black and steel okay so this came with the weapon till about 1942 and then there's a transition to this plastic type you notice it's basically the same as oils on this side and then this side is the thong that was just a little bit shorter than the nickel plated one so in about 1942 when they started adding the the butt trap these two items would fit inside it and just to remember the curvature of the pistol grip here is the length of the hole. So the top hole is longer and the bottom hole is shorter. Okay, so that's going to become important when we start talking about the lengths of some of the tools compared to the cleaning kit portions. So in 42, they switched over to a, a trapdoor butt plate. Later on in the 50s, then they started going to a different style. So this is the oiler and this is an M10 tool and this is a grease uh little area over here. These are the two grease pots that were early. This is a World War II version. It has, it says Luber plate on it, and it was a yellow grease with a flat bottom. And then later it went to the brown grease, and it just says grease on the top, grease rifle. It was brown, and then it was cupped or dished with sharp edges in the bottom. That's later. This is a 30 caliber uh, cleaning patch, and that's important in a minute. Later on in the 50s, they developed this thing called the M10 tool, which is this piece, which I talk about how to use it with the bolt, but it's also the rod handle for, um, for cleaning later on in the 50s. This is a chamber brush. This came out later. It can also be used in the M1As or M14s. All right, now we're gonna get to the tools themselves. The tools came out, the first ones were marked with a part number. And it was an angled screwdriver. Okay. This slot here was for the 30 caliber patches to clean your chamber prior to the use of this brush. Okay. This also did a couple more things. Took out the um, ruptured casing out. Um, this also did the rear sight tool. Where it was like a flush nut. And this just helps out drift out some of the pins that are in the uh, rifle. The later one, same exact thing, no part number, okay? It's the only difference. Later on, when they had the poppet type valve, which is the four, the cross four gas cylinder screw, they made this style and it was a little more positive uh, connection. This is shorter because they were modified from these longer lengths, okay? So this is later. And then even later than that, they shortened it down. They basically have the same tools, but they added the chamber brush here. On the back side is the same as the bolt tool to take apart the extractors. It's the same exact um, tool, just married on the back of the brush. So the whole idea of me doing this video a little later than requested was because of this. So I decided to make a mock-up 
of the stock itself. And this one has a butt plate with the trap door. Sometimes they're hard to open. This one, I just, for some reason, I was lucky to grab a really worn one. You'll notice that there's two holes in there. The top one is longer than the lower one. Well, the real reason why I did this whole thing was because it's a mock-up. So you can see exactly how everything gets stowed. So I just made this little cutaway piece. And now you can actually see inside. So we're going to open the door and I'm going to show you how they were stowed. So we'll start with the earliest one. Notice how short this, this chamber is, the lower one. This one actually goes in another three quarters of an inch easily, maybe even an inch. But the lengths are important to where you put these. Now, sometimes when you used to put them in, you'd have a lot of space. That's what the, the cleaning patches were for. So you would stuff them in and it would keep this from moving around. And as you're going around the battlefield, it would keep it from rattling. That's why the, the 30 caliber patches I said were important later on, not only just for cleaning the rifle, but they actually kept all the stuff from shifting around and making lots of noise. The oiler goes there. The length of the tools is a lot longer. It can't fit in the bottom one. It goes in the top one. You can also put in, I would, you can put in the 30 caliber patches down at the bottom, but they're so hard to get out I wouldn't do that I put them up front somewhere over here then you would take your grease pot and put it in yeah that was a good one I like that that was pretty funny but it fits in perfectly later on once the tool changed and they came to the to the rod sections, the later stuff in the 50s, probably more likely to see. I recommend this tool itself because it just cleans the chamber a lot better. The rod section goes to the top, so it gets reversed. You could put more 30 caliber patches there, then they would use the darker later grease. And then you could do your patches on top of that. And then your cleaning tool, and you can do the same thing. You can put the patches in the bottom. But this was made, it was, it'll was it just barely fit. You got to play around with it and slam that door home. And it will fit in there. But that's how you store your cleaning kits for your M1 Grand. Just remember if you're a reenactor and you're doing stuff, uh, the Baton Death March, they didn't have the cleaning kits back then. They just had the nickel nickel ones and they carried them loose and they would be using thongs. Um, later on, they would still be using thongs with the butt trap, with this, and then it would go to the plastic one after that. And then they would only have this type of tool basically during World War II. So that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Like I say, thank you again to Morty for the donation of the stock. And then for the idea, one of the viewers had uh, commented earlier, I was just waiting for the broken stock. It took me a while to get one. But thanks a lot. Take care.